Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Frank Carroll, who passed away at the age of 85 on June 9th, leaves behind an extraordinary legacy as a renowned figure skating coach and competitive skater. His passing marks the end of an era in the world of figure skating. Born in 1938 in Worcester, Massachusetts, Carroll's journey in figure skating began in his early teenage years when a skating rink opened in his neighborhood. The combination of artistry and athleticism captured his interest, leading him to pursue the sport passionately. After graduating from the College of the Holy Cross in 1960 with a B.S. in sociology, Carroll moved to Winchester, Massachusetts, where he trained with his coach, Maribel Vincent Owen. As a competitive skater, Carroll achieved notable success winning bronze medals at the junior level in the 1959 and 1960 U.S. championships. He turned professional, joining the Ice Follies and performing until 1964. Although he was accepted to law school at the University of San Francisco, Carroll chose to follow his passion for the arts, briefly pursuing acting. Carroll's true calling, however, was in coaching. His remarkable career as a figure skating coach saw him guiding some of the sport's greatest talents, including Linda Fradian, Michelle Kwan, and Evan Lysacek. Under his mentorship, Lysacek won the men's Olympic gold medal in 2010 at Vancouver, a crowning achievement in Carroll's illustrious career. Inducted into the World Figure Skating Hall of Fame, the United States Figure Skating Hall of Fame, and the Professional Skaters Association Coaches Hall of Fame, Carroll was also named the 1997 Olympic Coach of the Year. His dedication to the sport and his exceptional coaching skills earned him the admiration and respect of skaters and fans worldwide. Carroll coached at various prestigious rinks, including the Toyota Sports Center in El Segundo, California, and later at a rink in Cathedral City, California, to be closer to his home in Palm Springs. His impact on the sport is immeasurable, having trained multiple world champions and Olympians. Frank Carroll's legacy will endure through the countless skaters he coached and inspired. His contributions to figure skating have left an indelible mark, and he will be remembered fondly by all who had the privilege of knowing him and benefiting from his expertise. His passing is a profound loss, but his influence on the sport will continue to be felt for generations to come. Taylor Dawkins, who passed away at the age of 25 on June 2nd, leaves behind a legacy of remarkable strength, determination, and inspiration. After a nearly decade-long battle with liver cancer, Taylor's life and career continue to inspire all who knew her and those who followed her journey. Taylor, a softball star from Corona, California, was diagnosed with liver cancer at just 17 years old. Despite the grueling series of surgeries and chemotherapy, she remained a dominant force on the field, breaking state records and earning numerous accolades. Her extraordinary talent and unwavering spirit made her the most decorated athlete ever recruited by California State University Fullerton. A proud alum of Norco High School, she was named Gatorade's National Player of the Year, a testament to her exceptional skill and resilience. Her head coach, Kelly Ford, fondly referred to her as a humble warrior, emphasizing Taylor's ability to leave her personal struggles off the field and play with unparalleled passion. She played with passion, Ford said, and that young lady just always fought. Taylor's journey was marked by the kindness of organ donor Josh Menashe, who donated part of his liver, giving her two and a half more years to live life to the fullest. During this time, Taylor graduated from CSU Fullerton with a degree in communications and joined the ESPN Plus crew as a sports commentator. She also bought her first home in Tennessee, where she enjoyed country music 
and cherished her faith-based life with her family. Menashe, deeply moved by Taylor's spirit, remarked, I just want to live like Taylor. She's inspired me to do better and do more, and that is because of her faith. Taylor's strength, love, and unwavering faith radiated throughout her life, touching countless people. In her memory, a candlelight vigil was held on the field where she once played with such determination. Taylor Dawkins's legacy is one of incredible courage and inspiration, reminding us all to live life with passion, strength, and faith. She will be deeply missed, but her spirit will continue to inspire and guide many. Alan Scarf, who passed away at the age of 77 after a battle with colon cancer, leaves behind an illustrious legacy as a British-Canadian actor, stage director, and author. Born on June 8, 1946, in Harpenden, England, Scarf's journey in the arts began at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, where he trained from 1964 to 1966. His career as a classical stage actor saw him perform over 100 major roles in prestigious theaters across Europe, Canada, and the United States. Scarfi's powerful portrayals of characters such as King Lear, Othello, Hamlet, and Cyrano de Bergerac captivated audiences and showcased his immense talent. Scarf's impact on the world of theater extended beyond acting. He served as an associate director of the Stratford Festival and the Everyman Theater in Liverpool, directing productions that spanned from Shakespeare to contemporary playwrights like Arthur Miller and Harold Pinter. His dedication to the craft earned him numerous accolades, including a Jesse Award for Best Actor and a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Vancouver Film Critics Circle. In addition to his stage career, Scarfe made significant contributions to film and television. He won the 1985 Genie Award for Best Performance by an actor in a supporting role for The Bay Boy and earned Gemini and Genie nominations for other performances. He is remembered for his roles in popular TV series such as Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Voyager, and Seven Days. Scarfe's creative talents extended to writing, where he penned novels under the pseudonym Clannash Farjon. His works, including The Revelation of Jack the Ripper and The Vampires of Juarez, received critical acclaim and won several awards, including the Best Indie Book Award. Scarfi's personal life was as rich as his professional one. He was the son of university professors Gladys Ellen and Neville Vincent Scarf and was married to Barbara March until her death in 2019. He is survived by his children, Jonathan and Antonia, both of whom have made their marks in the arts. Alan Scarf's legacy is one of remarkable talent, dedication, and inspiration. His contributions to theater, film, television, and literature have left an indelible mark, and he will be remembered fondly by all who had the privilege of witnessing his artistry. Tom Bauer, who passed away at the age of 86, leaves behind a remarkable legacy as a beloved character actor known for his memorable roles in television and film. His passing was confirmed by his manager, Marsha McManus, though the cause of death was not disclosed. Born Ralph Thomas Bauer on January 3, 1938, in Denver, Tom Bauer's passion for acting was evident from a young age. An avid baseball player and participant in high school theatrics, he pursued his dream by moving to New York to study at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. After working a series of odd jobs, he relocated to Los Angeles to seek a career on screen. Bauer rose to fame with his recurring role as Dr. Curtis Willard on The Waltons, becoming a series regular in the show's fifth season in 1975. His character, who replaced Dr. Vance on Walton Mountain, became a beloved figure, especially as he married Mary Ellen Walton and started a family. Bauer's tenure on the show ended in 1978, but his impact remained significant. In the film world, Bauer made a lasting impression as the janitor Marvin in the 1990 action classic Die Hard 2. His character's assistance to John McClane, Bruce Willis, was a highlight of the film. More recently, Bauer collaborated with director Scott Cooper on Crazy Heart and Out of the Furnace, showcasing his versatility and depth as an actor. 
Tom Bauer's career spanned hundreds of roles in notable TV series such as Monk, Hill Street Blues, Murder, She Wrote, Miami Vice, China Beach, The X-Files, Roswell, The West Wing, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Criminal Minds, and Bosch. His dedication to his craft and consistent performances endeared him to audiences and colleagues alike. Beyond his acting career, Bauer was a dedicated advocate for SAG-AFTRA, serving on the SAG National Board and various committees. He co-created SAG-INDY, a union resource to help independent filmmakers employ union actors, reflecting his commitment to the industry and its people. Preceded in death by his wife of 51 years, Ursula, who passed away last August, Tom Bauer is survived by his children, Viv and Rob, his grandchildren, Nicole, Jonathan, Lucille, and Henry, and his siblings, Bobby and Shirley. Tom Bauer's legacy is one of talent, dedication, and inspiration. His contributions to television and film, along with his unwavering support for fellow actors, will be remembered and cherished by all who knew him and enjoyed his work. Jeanette Charles, who passed away at the age of 96 on June 2nd, leaves behind a unique and charming legacy as a British actress celebrated for her remarkable resemblance to Queen Elizabeth II. Born with a natural likeness to the British monarch, Jeanette's career took an unexpected turn when a commissioned portrait of her was mistaken for a painting of the Queen at the Royal Academy in London. This moment of serendipity in 1972 brought her into the spotlight and opened the door to a career that would see her portraying Queen Elizabeth II in numerous films, television shows, and advertisements. Before her rise to fame, Jeanette worked as an au pair and later pursued acting in repertory theater. However, her striking resemblance to the Queen made it challenging to secure diverse roles, leading her to leave acting and become a secretary. The accidental fame from the portrait incident allowed her to embrace her resemblance professionally, and she began receiving offers to portray the Queen. Jeanette's dedication to her craft was evident as she studied the Queen's voice and mannerisms, ensuring her impersonations were as accurate as possible. She brought humor and grace to her roles in films such as Secrets of a Super Stud, Queen Kong, All You Need Is Cash, National Lampoon's European Vacation, The Naked Gun, From the Files of Police Squad, and Austin Powers in Goldmember. Her appearances on television including Spike Milligan's Q series, Saturday Night Live, and Mind Your Language, further solidified her reputation as the go-to Queen Elizabeth II impersonator. Jeanette Charles was not just an actress, but a beloved figure who brought joy and amusement to many through her portrayals. Her insistence on maintaining the dignity of the Queen in her roles, and her refusal to take on inappropriate offers, showcased her respect for the real monarch she so closely resembled. After retiring in 2014, Jeanette lived in Danbury, Essex, enjoying her well-deserved rest. She is survived by her three children, who were undoubtedly proud of their mother's extraordinary career. Her husband, Ken, predeceased her in 1997. Janice Page, who passed away at the age of 101 on June 2nd, leaves behind a rich legacy as an American actress and singer whose career spanned nearly 60 years. She was one of the last surviving stars from the golden age of Hollywood, known for her versatile talent and enduring charm. Born Donna May Jaden on September 16, 1922 in Tacoma, Washington, Janice began singing in local amateur shows at the age of five. After high school, she moved to Los Angeles and became a singer at the Hollywood Canteen during World War II, where her performances for troops led to a film contract with Warner Bros. Janice's early film career, saw her co-starring in musicals alongside stars like Dennis Morgan and Jack Carson. She made a significant mark with her role in Romance on the High Seas, which was also Doris Day's movie debut. Despite her success in Hollywood, Janice left the studio system to pursue live theater, making a triumphant Broadway debut in the comedy mystery play Remains to be Seen. Her stardom soared with her role as Babe in the Broadway musical The Pajama Game, which cemented her status as a leading lady of musical theater. 
Although she was replaced by Doris Day in the film adaptation, Janice continued to shine on stage and screen, appearing in notable films like Silk Stockings and Please Don't Eat the Daisies. In addition to her film and theater work, Janice was a familiar face on television. She starred in her own sitcom, It's Always Jan, and made memorable appearances in shows such as The Fugitive, Eight is Enough, and All in the Family. Her versatility extended to dramatic roles, including a performance as an institutionalized prostitute in The Caretakers. Janice's contributions to entertainment were recognized with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Despite facing challenges later in life, including severe vocal cord damage, she demonstrated resilience and a commitment to her craft, eventually regaining her voice with the help of dedicated professionals. Her personal life saw three marriages, with her longest and final marriage to composer Ray Gilbert lasting until his death in 1976. Janice was known for her Republican views and her support for Dwight D. Eisenhower's presidential campaign in 1952. Eric Anderson, who passed away at the age of 67 on June 1st, leaves behind a multifaceted legacy as an American actor and novelist. Known for his diverse roles in film and television, Eric's contributions to the entertainment industry and literature have touched many lives. Born Edward Eric Anderson on October 24, 1956, in Sagamihara, Japan, Eric's early life was marked by frequent moves due to his military family background. He attended Hilltop High School in Chula Vista, California, and initially pursued studies in biochemistry and molecular biology at the University of California, Santa Barbara, with aspirations of attending medical school. However, his passion for acting led him to a different path, one that would see him become a beloved figure in Hollywood. Eric's breakout role came in the 1984 horror classic, Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter, where he portrayed Rob Deere. This role cemented his status in the horror genre and opened doors to a prolific acting career. He starred in notable films such as Bat 21 and the drama Unfaithful. Throughout his career, Eric appeared in over 300 television episodes, showcasing his versatility across a variety of genres. He had significant roles in series like Second Chances, 30-something, and Felicity, where he played Felicity's father. His guest appearances on popular shows such as Melrose Place, Murder, She Wrote, CSI, CSI, Miami, Star Trek, The Next Generation, House, and The Outer Limits, left a lasting impression on audiences. In addition to his acting career, Eric was a talented novelist, publishing three novels between 2012 and 2022. His literary works added another layer to his creative legacy, demonstrating his ability to captivate audiences, not just on screen, but through his written words as well. Eric's personal life was marked by his marriage to actress Saxon Trainer, with whom he shared a deep bond. His battle with esophageal cancer came to an end at his home in Los Angeles. Eric Anderson's legacy is one of artistic dedication and versatility. His memorable performances and literary contributions will continue to inspire and entertain. He will be remembered fondly by his family, friends, and fans, and his impact on the arts will endure for years to come. Breaking news of the day, News 1, Josh Maravich, son of Basketball Hall of Famer Pete Maravich and former LSU basketball player, has died at 42, the school announced Sunday. Maravich passed away Friday at the family home in Covington, Louisiana. Following in his legendary father's footsteps, Maravich played for LSU from 2001 to 2005. I wanted to come here for my dad, to make him proud, he told the Daily Reveille in 2005. I knew I wasn't going to be a star player, but being a walk-on was what I always wanted to do. Pete Maravich, the NCAA's all-time leading scorer, gained renewed attention earlier this year when his record was broken by Iowa's Caitlin Clark. Tragically, Pete died in 1988 at age 40 from an undiagnosed heart condition. LSU did not reveal Josh Maravich's cause of death. In 2022, Josh participated in ceremonies 
unveiling a bronze statue of Pistol Pete Maravich at LSU, a tribute driven by him and his brother Jason, depicting their father in his iconic behind-the-back pass pose. News 2 Michael J. Fox, star of Back to the Future, has linked his heavy partying in the 1980s to his poor health later in life. The 62-year-old actor opened up about the possibility during an interview with CBS Sunday Morning last year, while discussing his documentary, Still, a Michael J. Fox movie. When asked by Jane Pauley about a previous comment he made after receiving an honorary Oscar from Woody Harrelson in 2022, Fox acknowledged the potential impact of his hard partying. We did some damage in the 80s, he admitted. Fox speculated on whether his lifestyle could have contributed to his Parkinson's disease, saying, There's so many ways that you can... that I could have hurt myself. I could have hit my head. I could have drank too much at a certain developmental period. Diagnosed with Parkinson's at 29, Fox kept the diagnosis secret for years, taking medication to hide his symptoms. He believes his condition could be due to a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Genetics loads the gun and environment pulls the trigger, he explained. Despite his ongoing battle with the disease, Fox remains realistic about his future. He expressed concerns about his life expectancy, doubting he would reach 80. However, after decades of campaigning and raising awareness, Fox remains determined. My life is set up so... I can pack Parkinson's along with me if I have to, he concluded.